Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Charity Engine's Ultron release webinar. Um, we uh, hopefully everybody who is uh, on today's webinar has spent a little time diving into uh, the some of the updates and features that you may have seen since we went live with the new Ultron release this morning. Um, great new features, a lot of cool things, um, and we're excited to to show them to you uh, in in today's presentation. So just to go over some of the things that you can expect to see um, on today's webinar are we've got a new query builder. And I think this is one of the biggest things we've added, um, really changing some of the, the e certainly changing the ease of use of the query tool. Um, an admin and listing screen changes. Uh, so certain ways to look at data uh, has certainly become more uh, easy to use. A new user center, that's one of the exciting things um, is how the user center is now a single sign on across uh, just about all functionality for your donors who you may wanna provide that service for. Um, great changes in advocacy and updates. PayPal integration, and then um, some functionality around membership tools. So we're going to go right into the the software and show you what we've got. Um, so to do that, I'll take you over to this screen. And the first thing I want to show is the new user center, um, which is these are the settings for the user center uh, in the this is in online. So this is if you have the user center. If you don't yet have the user center, uh, we may want to reach out to our client services team about adding that functionality. Uh, but it's, again, single sign-on access for your for your users. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, here is a great example. This is uh, a sample with me. Um, so let me show you some of the functionality you're going to have now in the user center. Uh, first is the ability to um, edit an individual's uh, uh, primary data and to do that they'll just go here to edit and they can go ahead and change it they can also edit um, their communications preferences and uh, you currently have this within the contact record the ability to manage this at the global level so global receipt of email phone calls or mail um, and now all it takes is a quick switch of the button to update that um, for them on their end. And then also um, topics of interest. So these would be um, lists that they're on <laughs> uh, that they would have the access to determine whether or not they want to remove themselves from those lists. Now, um, that's not every list that somebody's on. So we give you control of the list. So just be aware of that and I'll show you where that functionality is. We'll go back to our dashboard here. Okay, and a couple more things. So we've got our change of preferences there. Um, here we see our events that we've attended, and we can go to see more, and we'll see more of those events. Uh, and as you can see here, this is actually tied into a fundraising dashboard. And I'll go ahead and open that in a new link. And that is tied to my fundraising dashboard. So again, that single sign-on access to everything. We'll go back here. Uh, a couple other things that we can, uh, they can manage right here is um, managing things like sustainer gifts. So I click on that and that'll give me some access to uh, managing that uh, and do some editing. Important, they cannot end a sustainer gift. If they want to do that, they have to reach out to you. So this just gives them the chance to update their credit card on their own or look at some information. Um, but no, they cannot uh, just cancel a sustainer membership. Um, and then we see the editing there, <coughs> and it even shows us their their their. This is their status: gold member two, thirty dollars, and the next one is due on five twenty. Um, and then here we have the ability to print out our donation history, so I can go through and click on an individual, or I can click on um, print all of them, and so forth. And we can even look at more. That's just showing our last three. Here we see all of them. And important to know if there is not, um, if there was no donation, then as you can see here, there's no ability to print. So um, the print is only available for uh, for donations that actually, or transactions that actually have dollar values. So that is a little bit about what we've got going on in the user center. Uh, and again, if you're looking to uh, learn more about that, uh, please reach out to your client services representatives uh, and they will be happy to walk you through. Um, that again is managed in the online section here. So the pink section as we like to call it. Um, and as I mentioned, those opt-in lists, you would choose which opt-in lists you want displayed available because here you might have, you know, 
uh, dozens of opt-in lists. You only certain, want certain ones available, um, and so you could select it and then add it. And then once, even though this is your internal name, you present a friendly name. And like you see here, Animal of the Week or Monthly Newsletter. So great features and functionality. Um, and again, reach out to our team if you'd like to know more. So that is the user center in today's release. Now let's take a look at, uh, we're gonna go into a different part of Charity Engine. And, <coughs> okay, so now we're working in the, that was in my sandbox, now I'm showing you my demo account. Uh, based on different things I can show you is why I'm using different accounts. Um, so uh, one thing I wanna point out right here, I've already clicked on it, but up here you have the ability to access um, any alerts. If you haven't clicked on it yet, it should appear in red. Uh, and that would give you access to, uh, if, you are, if you haven't already downloaded it, I click on here um, and I could click on the user guide, which is this guide right here that we created that shows you um, a visual explainer of all of the functions we've added in this particular uh, release. So we do that every week. You can also grab that from the email that went out this morning and so forth. All right. So next we're going to look at Query Builder. <laughs> As I said, this is probably the most exciting new functionality we've added. Uh, and we'll go to Queries. It's in Automation Workflow, as you know. Um, and just to show, we are going to create new we have the query, the new query builder, and then legacy. So if you um, logged in today, you're not used to the new system. You need to work quickly. Um, there's maybe certain things that are uh, on that you're not as comfortable with in the query tool, the new query tool. You can just go to legacy, and that will give you access to uh, query as it's as it has been presented in the past. But let's take a look at um, a new query. So the first thing we're going to do is select <laughs> the type of query this is. And as you can see, I'm on contacts, and that gives me these elements of contacts. Um, if I went into donations, now that's going to give me different access. So you should be familiar with that. We'll go back to contacts, continue. And a couple bits of functionality here. Uh, the first is, obviously, you can click here and find all your available fields, but I can search a word right here, and then as you see, it'll show me every time that appears. So it makes it a little bit easier to find um, certain things. I type in email, and now it's gonna show me all of the fields related to email. So we've, uh, I think we've done a real cool job of making that easier to use. So I'm gonna go first, and I want this person's uh, first name. So what you have on the top here is, these are the fields you're going to want to export. Um, so we go first, and I'll make this easy, last, okay? And um, we, maybe you, this would be thought of as like column headers on a spreadsheet. So this is what you want displayed. Um, and then filter is what we want to filter by. So I'm gonna filter by, and last name equals, All right, so that would be my filter, okay? And then down, once I've set all that up, I've got my preview, and I can run this by clicking the green run button or click right here, I'll do it right here. Okay, and that shows me everybody, last name Kessler. Um, and as I said, so you see first name, last name, those are the columns you're choosing to see up here. Then you've got a couple bits of extra functionality there. Um, first of all is set formula. So I can capitalize, maybe some of your, um, your names are not fully cap properly capitalized, et cetera. This will automatically do that. Um, set value if blank. So if, you, if there is a blank return, you go ahead and check that. And then, um, and then group by. And group by will, um, when I run that, that'll show me just, uh, it'll group a particular thing. Um, and that's what we've got there. And then I can just click that off, rerun it, and we're back. So that's what group by does. Um, and you can preview, or you can do a page. And let's say I had a, a query that returned a lot of information. Um, I could sort through all that. And we'll take a look at another query that's a little bit more built out that'll show you that. Um, if I'm adding more filters, um, I can drop them in, or if I'm, in, if I'm doing groupings, uh, groupings, I can add that, and now I've got things like, now I can do this and this, and I go ahead and uh, I can make it and, or, and not, 
or not. So that would be that combo. And again, I'm going to show you one that's a little bit more filled out. So I just wanted to make you a little familiar with what you're seeing here. Again, these are your column headers. These are your filters. And then this allows you to display your data. And I run it like that. Over here, we have our sort button. So when I click on sort button, I can say sort by first name. Okay, and that'll do an order and then last name and that'll do an order, but I can put that back and I want that. And then once that's been set, I can click on an arrow and that'll determine whether it's ascending or descending. So in this case, I'm actually going to move this back. We'll do first name. Ascending. Okay, we run it. Okay, and now it's uh, it's ascending. So that is a little taste of this new tool. Hopefully you find it easy to use. Um, and if you've got any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask them. Uh, I'm happy to answer things. Might be able to easier get to them towards the end of the presentation. Let's take a look at a little bit more of a complex uh, query um, showing you one that exists. So this is top 10 lifetime rank. So we're going to go ahead and edit. And remember, if I want to edit in legacy, I just click on that. Legacy refers to the old system. Okay, so here I've got my company name, last name, lifetime attributed amount, lifetime direct amount, attributed rank, and first name, and then lifetime attributed rank is less than or equal to 10. So I'm looking for my top 10 based on giving rank. Now I click run, and now I see my lifetime information, and then there is the rank that we were talking about. Um, and we see the sorting mechanisms as well. That tells us how that was sorted. So that is a little bit more of a simple uh, query. We'll go back, take a look at, this one's a little bit more complex. Okay, because in this one, I've set up um, a query that is payment amount of greater than or equal to 1,000, where tribute type is empty, and this is sustainer type is empty. Um, and so that's saying I want everything over $1,000 that's not a tribute type or not a sustainer type. And here I have and payment amount is less than or equal to $100, and tribute type is not equals empty. So what I'm saying here is I want over $1,000 that's not a tribute or a sustainer. This group saying, I want less than or equal to $100 that is a tribute. Now, if I run an and on this, as it's set up right here, I'm probably not gonna get any data. I'm gonna switch this to or, because those would be conflicting, but now I'm saying I want everyone who's over $1,000 that's not these, or is under 100 and is this, and when I go run that, now I've got my data. And as you can see, I'm in preview mode. I go to page. And now it's showing me that I have 99 records, one through 21 of 99, and then I can go ahead and click next and I can look through. So that is a huge change is how uh, with, with the new query builder is now when I set things up, <coughs> I can preview right away and I can even look at all of my data. Um, and then up here, I can clear all to start over, start a new query, export the data, um, send a start a mail initiative from this, start an email blast, uh, email blast or uh, send a scheduled email from this. So um, again, great new functionality, play with it a little bit um, and definitely give us our, your feedback. We look forward to hearing what you got to say. So that's the query tool. And again, uh, any questions? Um, oh, one question that came through, and I'm, I'm guessing this is how long will the query legacy be, uh, remain an option? Uh, I think this is probably going to be up for about two months. Um, uh, once we've seen that people are effectively moved over, um, we, we will cut it off, but I would expect that it's going to be about two months. So don't worry, it's not going to happen this week, but definitely start utilizing this tool uh, because as you can see, uh, much easier and cleaner to utilize. All right, what are we gonna look at next? We've got our queries. Um, and, uh, excellent. Okay, so let's go back here to our, our main area and I'm gonna go to contacts, search and manage. And I wanna show you, we talked about the listing screens overhaul was mentioned uh, in this particular release. And you'll notice a couple things. First of all, active filters. So any, act, any filters that are currently open are set here. And what's great is, let's say I switch this to um, opt-in list um, 
friends of the partnership and I set that to all and now I'm filtering that way okay and I close my advanced filter now I'm still showing my um, that filter and I can click it off edit there uh, delete it and then that will go refresh to um, everything or I can click on it and that'll take me directly to uh, that'll open it up and now I've got that available so we just made it easier to find your filters when the advanced filter tool is closed um, we've improved pagination um, so now you have the option to display up to 500 records on a single frame um, and we also have the ability to skip from you can go to last um, next and so forth. I can't do that here because obviously I only have three records. Um, but again, more options in terms of looking around. And remember all of this information that I'm showing you today, you can also access right up here and download this uh, PDF, which will walk you through these things. Um, another great uh, uh, feature you're going to see here is, we'll go back to advanced filter, is the new date time widget. Um, I think we've definitely made it much easier to find certain dates. And to do that, you just click here and say created, and it's already set to right now. And I can say, I want created January 1st, and then we'll say 12, 0, 0. And now, and now that's set there. So um, it, a little bit confusing maybe at the beginning, but once you really start utilizing this, um, you'll find it's much easier uh, a way to think about data than before when you had to scroll up and down. Um, so we're, we're sorry, not data, dates and time. Um, all right, that's the date time picker. And then lastly is data view. So uh, let me close advanced filter and show you what I'm talking about. This button right here, um, if I click on it, it's going to give me a couple different view options. And one of them is summary view, and then we have detail view. Okay. And what that's going to do is that's going to show my. Um, my information in more, it's going to show me every single um, field related to a contact. So it gives you all the data without having to scroll in. So if you're used to the way it was, which is the summary view, right? Now you had great data, but you didn't have all of your data necessarily accessible. So now you can switch it over here to detail view, and that's going to act in more of a spreadsheet format. And I'll see every single view. Uh, every single field that's part of that available to me. Uh, and this is really a phase one. This is something you're going to see where you're going to be using a lot more, um, using this a lot more to actually give you the ability to click into data. Um, but right now, get used to using this, um, and you could play around with the different looks. Again, this is sort of a, a, a phase one, um, so at the moment it's more simple, but uh, great data at your fingertips. So we're excited about that. Um, next, I want to take you into adv advocacy. And by the way, here is another little uh, change that was made. I can click here, type in, and I can say, um, uh, what's something that, let's see, I start typing search, and then it's going to show me all of the search and manages. So it, it lets you find things in the drop down menu a little bit faster. Let's go to advocacy. Okay. So, a couple great features in advocacy, and let's go to look at, okay, and this is a little slower because it's running in, uh, in uh, the, the uh, test environment here, but um, so here we have an example of our new advocacy tool, um, and this is uh, a template. You can design your own templates. I, I borrowing uh, from our friends at Hunger Free America, uh, using a template that they had. Um, so you can really design this to make your um, your advocacy page look however you want. Uh, and a couple great things you'll notice, first of all, uh, before we required a login, um, but now you are not required a login. It said it said login or uh, sign return user, um, but you don't we don't require that anymore. That is an option for you. And I'll show you where one would take care of that. Um, that is under advanced, which is require login. So you can either require a login or not require a login. Um, that is one function that we've added. Um, content. 
So now we have our content when someone is is here and they're what they're seeing and when they're logged in uh, doing the task and now we have action taken so we can set it up so um, the action taken page is after they've taken an action you can now have content um, here like a donate button so um, so that is a great new feature also action taken emails um, right here under advanced I have the ability to set up an action email so this is similar to the kind of emails you would the way you would set up an email uh, as an automated trigger email on a uh, on a, uh, a web form or something um, so here we choose our email template which has already been designed and then we <laughs> add our information um, so two great features uh, sorry three great features we have the action taken text action taken email and then requiring user to log in to take action. Um, also regions. So now we have the ability that you can make it so um, only a specific region uh, can access a particular issue. So maybe you have something that is completely particular to Kansas. So we just select Kansas and we can add, and maybe this is particular to Kansas and Kentucky and we add, so you, the zip code that somebody enters will determine whether or not they can access this issue. Um, and of course, if you leave it blank, it'll just default to all. So very cool new feature. Um, we we've, we've, uh, have a lot of clients using advocacy uh, and there's been a, a, a lot of action taken to make it uh, an improved tool and make it even better for them. Um, and I think you're seeing that here. So lots of happy uh, users. Um, and then, uh, sorry, um, uh, so two more things to be aware of is the ability to do a federal requirement, um, which is to, uh, when you have an issue, assign it to something. So, um, this is for folks to keep, keep kids from hungry, going hungry. So we may refer to that as families, or we may refer to that as social welfare. We'll put it under families. And then our position as an organization, whether we're pro, con, and neutral, and then our position statement. So when you set up an issue, add that information, um, it helps on the federal level for getting through um, because they want to be able to sort of segment and compartmentalize issues. Uh, and now we have the ability to say, this is the topic area, this is our organization's position, and this is the individual. Um, also in configuration, under account settings, Under advocacy, we can assign an individual <laughs> to be the organization's representative for that uh, uh, for the, for for advocacy. So, if you need somebody who you say this is the person who's in charge, um, and I could say it's Samuel Carpenter right there, and that will be the individual at our organization who is responsible for our advocacy positions. Okay. Okay. So next up is PayPal integration. So this is certainly very exciting. Um, we'll go to online. We now have the ability to add PayPal. Now you have to have an, a PayPal um, gateway set up. So it's important to do that. But once you do, it's very easy to add uh, PayPal. Um, and let's look at where we would do that. So right down here under, uh, we'll go to our manage or we could have gone to fields, but I'm gonna go to manage here. And then we go to layout to get our fields, okay? And um, donation information, we're going to create a new field. Okay, and this is under donation information. Okay, and the data type, sorry, is um, the type right here. When you create the form, just select down here to PayPal payment button. So under this, when you go to create a form and it says what type, Go to the drop down, and if you haven't ever played with this, this is important to know that you can make a field, um, set it that it automatically goes into a number of areas in the system, um, system wide. But you want to select that this is a PayPal payment button, and that will put the PayPal button on uh, onto uh, a form. So, but again, you need a gateway set up for that. So, um, so this doesn't automatically pipe in PayPal. You need to have that part set up. Again, reach out to client services if you have any questions. 
Okay, and then lastly, uh, and again, if you have any questions about the new release, please um, feel free to ans uh, ask them here. Hopefully, um, we've done a good job of communicating everything that's, uh, that's in Charity Engine, the new version of Charity Engine, the new release, um, so, uh, so you're, you're clear on what's here. But we are obviously available to answer questions as needed. Um, so next, we're going to go into uh, a couple things around membership. And the first is under configuration and under our membership, membership activation. Sorry, that's not where I meant to go. Oops. <laughs> um, membership um, types. Okay, and now I'm gonna manage in here. And we've added the ability to create a default duration for a membership type. So we can say that the annual fund leadership cycle, the duration is always one year or 10 months. So you now have that ability to, it's a default duration for that, um, for that uh, membership type. Um, we'll go back. And then we're going to go to our automation and workflow section. Okay. And here we're going to go to workflow triggers. And you can see here, um, now we have two workflow uh, trigger types. So this is about building a query. There is a process. So this isn't necessarily something you go in and quickly uh, whisk away. But if you're a process and you're, you've worked with us to build out your workflow around um, membership capabilities and turning them on and turning them off, we now have triggers for deactivating memberships and extending memberships. So that means you can run a, a process um, it will uh, automatically find all of the uh, members that fit that um, from a query, and uh, and then it will take that action to extend the memberships. So you're going to want uh, certainly our our help in setting that up. But as you can see, this is a huge um, help in terms of when you have large numbers of memberships in the thousands and ten thousands that you're managing and you need to start and stop them. Uh, now that can be managed as an automated trigger job. So um, that, I believe, <laughs> highlights just about everything uh, or at least the really cool stuff that's been part of the new system and things that might have confused you or you might have wanted to know um, how to access it. So again, you see things like our, the filters are up here and the pagination right down here. Um, so that's everywhere. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy the new Charity Engine tool, uh, the, the Charity Engine updates. Again, go here for the Ultron release April 2017 to download this document, um, which shows you a little bit of everything, a couple things to be aware of. I click return to top, takes me up here. I click a specific area, new user center, and it'll take me there. So um, easy to access, easy to look around. Thank you for being part of Charity Engine, everybody. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, lee.kessler at charityengine.net. Happy to answer any questions you have um, as we uh, continue to make Charity Engine the gosh darn best donor management platform there is. Thanks so much and have a great day.